We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. And today, we're bringing them to you so you can take action immediately and start creating real content momentum. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh. Oh yeah. Today we are venturing into what is unknown lands for many. Not only that, but some direct markers are even afraid of talking about this. But more on that later. Today's guest was a keynote speaker at Potmax. We immediately knew we had to have him on the show. So naturally, hashtag table face, we asked him to be our guest. Guys, I don't think you understand. I have been so pumped up about today's guest since he said yes. He comes from the world of private equity funding, which, like we said, is foreign <laughs> land for some direct marketers. That being said, today's guest knows his fair share about startups and how to grow successful businesses. His experience goes from Wall Street and real estate and the way to private equity funding and being a producer of international television show, Meet the Drapers. How interesting is this guy? Mm -hmm. Not only that, he is also the CEO of Republic Crowdfunding Portal and probably the most important thing, proud husband and father. That's right. I can't wait. And I am sure you can need it either. So without further ado, please welcome CEO of Republic Crowdfunding Portal and the one guy you want to have in your network, Mr. Chuck Petty! Welcome, Chuck. Thank you. I love the, uh, oh, love the internet. Man, awesome. Today we were like juggling this new setup and it was like the energy and we're trying to figure this like fl the whole flow, but the show is on the way. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to have you here and sharing all your knowledge. <laughs> uh, I, I'm excited to be here and share away. I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Yeah, a, a little background for those listening. We met Chuck at the PodMax event, mm -hmm. and he was the keynote speaker. And we were just blown away by the things that you were sharing, Chuck. This Again, at the moment, I've been, you know, looking, reading, trying to learn more about the, the venture capitalist world, you know, uh, funding. And I love all that startup. We, you know, we are fans of the Silicon Valley show, all that, all that oh, type of so stuff, good. right? So good. And then you came <laughs> in and you were just dropping bombs of knowledge <laughs> and new opportunities that we didn't know existed. And we were people need to know about oh. this. So, Chuck, <laughs> you know, before we get into all that golden, you know, meat nuggets, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> who is Chuck and how did you get there? Huh. It's been a long ride. So I've been in New York for, for 22 years now, believe it or not. I know I look really young and vibrant, but Absolutely. I've been here for a while um, as my lights turn off. But um, yeah, no, so I started off with a pretty classic Wall Street you know, experience, got into hedge funds. I'm sorry, I went to grad school, then got into hedge funds, got the entrepreneurial bug, started off in a real estate with a real estate company that I, I founded and led for about six years. I wanted to get back into mainstream investing. Um, found my route through uh, through angel investing, investing in startups. I started a little micro VC fund. One thing led to another. It did exactly what it was supposed to do, helped me network. And I met a couple of fellows who were um, currently at AngelList, which is the world's largest platform for private investments. Mm -hmm. And they were coming up with a, a plan for what is called Republic. Mm -hmm. I loved it from the very second I heard about it, had to be part of it. Um, was lucky enough to be asked to be part of it and basically came on as a first employee. And for you guys who don't know what Republic is, it, it is an investment crowdfunding platform. We came to the world with a regulation crowdfunding license. It lets us and the companies we work with raise money from anyone, anywhere, regardless of their wealth. So it's really one of the first opportunities for people to invest in private companies. Uh, it was part of the 2012 Jobs Act and didn't go effective until May of 2016, the same month that we like, you know, came to life. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a that was me. I, I came into it to help build out the deal team. We were five people then, and today we're 105 plus people. Wow, we had four campaigns then, 25,000 users, and $75,000 average raise per campaign. Today we have 
whatever, 60 live campaigns, 800,000 registered users, and average campaign size of about 500,000 over the last year, year and a half. Uh, what? So it's becoming a thing. Yeah. 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 That is amazing, you know, and I don't, I, I want people to understand is the opportunity that's in this, right? Because before what the, the title, before Title Three, right, is called, um, yep. what that, that passed on 2016, you needed to have certain, right, like, uh, I guess you, you needed to fit to, a profile. Yeah, you need to, to fit a profile to, invest, to be able to right? invest, right? How difficult was for people to actually fit that profile? What they needed needed to have? Yeah, you need to be an accredited investor, and to be an accredited investor, you need you know something along along the lines of two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year in income for two years straight, or a million dollars in assets, not including your primary residence. Mm -hmm. uh, that leaves very few people who are accredited, which means there's very few people who can invest in these opportunities, like you read about in the papers after they made someone you know a hundred million dollars. Um, mm -hmm. It really did open the open the doors to millions and millions of people, billions if, if you really look at it. Yeah. And it, it's about diversifying the playing field or about, you know, mm. democratizing the playing field, I should say, not diversifying. We're trying to diversify it with a lot of new like verticals and everything like that. So we can get into that too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I see the I hear the word opportunity, right? Not only for people on the investing side of things, but also for people that are building these amazing companies with yes. you know, amazing uh, products or amazing services like they can reach, you know, hundreds or thousands of people that I will add so much value to their lives, right? Like we, oh, yeah. we have all the stories. So what, uh, you know, I, I, I'm curious, like, what was the motivation be like behind this whole movement? Because you guys, I'm assuming you guys faced a lot of resistance, right? From maybe the marketplace or maybe the industry. Are you guys oh. still facing that resistance? Like how was that process? Tons of stereotypes, ton, tons of people who didn't believe, Silicon Valley especially being one of the places that didn't believe. They're a pretty tight-knit community who like to have their own like, you know, private deal flow where it was a you know bit of a good old boys network. Yeah. One of the things we came out of the gates with, we immediately talked the talk on, we've since walked the walk on is really, you know, representing the underserved founder. Mm. So that could be, you know, minority founders, it could be female founders, it can also be you know, a guy or gal from Fargo, South Dakota, um, who's typically overlooked in the venture space. So we wanted to build a platform that was inclusive and could cater to people because we look at it as being ideas, you know, they're not restricted to borders and mm -hmm. people have really good businesses that, you know, exist in places you don't look. Now we're giving them a platform to kind of cl climb to the top of the mountain and, you know, scream. Uh, it's a great chance to get exposure to who you are, what you're building. You can pick up some dollars along the way from, you know, in yeah. for all the investors, or you can get new clients that, that'll buy your products and services. One thing to like, you know, immediately shake out of your mind is this is not like rewards based crowdfunding. It's a completely different beast. We're not a Kickstarter mm -hmm. Indiegogo. The psyche of the, you know, of the investor, our user is much different. They want a return on investment and that'll go as far. And I've seen this, I've seen this plenty of times. You know, if they're putting 20 bucks in it, maybe they're like nephew who's doing the campaign. They're not going to put it in unless they really feel like it's going to make a return on investment. And people yeah. say, why? It's crowd, you know, crowd investing. They're doing 20 bucks like they care. It's not that big a deal. They're not sophisticated. First of all, they're very sophisticated. The vast majority of investors are sophisticated. Secondly, I like to put into perspective and say, like, you know, if you've worked at a with a with an employer who gives you a 401k plan, you get that, you know, bi-weekly check ends up getting split to that plan. It may go to say 10 mutual funds. The one with the least amount of diversification gets what, 20 bucks sent to it? What do you want that 20 bucks to do? Are you throwing it away? You want to have a return on investment in that mutual fund two, three, five, 10 years out. You want a return on investment. That's the mentality of our users and investor base when they look at these opportunities. And I think that's a huge positive for the, you know, the, for the future of this industry. People aren't just throwing away their money. They're looking for something. Absolutely. Uh, I know you want to like dive in with a ton of questions that you, uh, but, but before this, I, I have, you, you, you mentioned this in a few of the shows that, that we hear that you were on and you just mentioned it too, like the underserved founder, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and we're originally from, from Venezuela, right? Yeah. Uh, our accents have improved <laughs> like a lot since we first came here, which is good. But, you know, as somebody foreign, you know, I, I hear a success story with one of your Hispanic, you know, uh, companies, which is so awesome. And then, but I was listening to a show, How I Built This, and they were interviewing, I think was, his name is Tote, like the, the Calendly uh, founder, right? And he, he's a black man from Nigeria. 
and he faced this whole thing when he went to like to go to these places to get some money right and he's like man like i just feel like he wrote it on his like biography and his articles like i feel the resistance because of the way that i look because of the way that i speak yeah. so to me the what you guys are doing is wonderful i just want to bring that up to light because there's so many people out there with wonderful ideas and maybe that perception in front of the people that make those decisions play against them and you guys are leveling this playing field yeah. like we talk a lot with content in the community building and all of this so i just wanted to acknowledge that because there's a huge market not only on the investing side but also on the on the opportunity and consumer side of things because our products are creating real real value that are being overseen because xyz because the founder doesn't you know speak proper english or doesn't look a certain way um, yeah no i i love what you mentioned about leveling the playing field right And, and honestly, that's how I saw it was when you started talking about Republic. I was like, wow, what a great opportunity. Because I think they you can invest as little as $10, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so through our reg CF deals, you can invest as low as... It's up to the founder to decide what the minimum investment amount is, but it, it can be as low as $10. Sometimes it's like $50. But it's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, it's accessible. But it means... And this is how, how I see it, right? Because when these big private deals, right, that other people didn't have access to happen... Right. A few are benefiting there. But at the same time, the company, then it has to kind of like build their audience as well as they go. What I see fantastic here in Republic is like these companies, while they're getting crowdfunded, they're also, you know, is people believing in this company and they, they're they're probably going to be clients as well on this. And they themselves are going to turn around and spread the voice <laughs> and share with more people. So it's I mean, the community aspect of it, it's yeah. huge. You hit our three main goals for every campaign, whether it's through, and we'll go into some more later. You know, we're not just Reg CF. We also have Reg A, Reg D. We have real estate. We have video games. We have Main Street. We have a lot of different verticals, but um, and early and late stage, everything in between. So the company is our main focus for them, and it's actually really through content. That's why I think it's a perfect show for me to be on this whole industry <laughs> to understand like there's mega opportunity within this industry for you if you can do it the right way. Um, If we can get someone to a deal page, uh, a user, a current investor of ours, whoever, and they can make an informed decision to either invest, become a client, or tell someone else about it, it's going to be a successful campaign. Even if they only do one of those, they do two, you're, doing, you're looking really damn good. If you do all three, it's going to be a super successful campaign for you. You're going to want to come back for more later on, you know, for for other crowd raises too. Wow, that's amazing! Do you have any success story that happened? With all those three things happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we get, I think the average number of investors per campaign now is somewhere around 1,900. Average raise, I told you, is about 500K over the last, you know, year and a half. And then we'll see, uh, you know, key metrics on teams go, like they'll pick up a couple new thousand clients. They'll sell a few hundred thousand dollars worth of, of new products and services. We've had some that have sold millions of dollars worth of new because our campaigns, and we all know of it, this is why I use it. I'd rather, you know, call it something different. Well, maybe we can come up with something different for it, but it's a shark tank effect. When, when people watch television, they watch Shark Tank, they can't invest. They're like, I'm going to go buy that thing. The same thing <laughs> happens over time. It's not like a one-night wonder. So yeah. It happens over time on the campaign with Republic. You get out in front of 20,000 people. You get out in front of 100,000 people. We send it to our 800,000 user base. And there's all these pops that happen with the product and service. And it doesn't need to be you know, a, a consumer product. It doesn't need to be something that they can touch. We've seen this happen with SaaS companies. We've seen this happen with deep tech companies. There needs to just be something relatable uh, to the general mass audience. Like real estate's a good example. You have like a hardcore real estate tech firm. It's yeah. Not really, you know, something that they, they can use in their like, you know, their residential neighborhood, but they get retail. It's for commercial property use. Yeah, but they, you know what? They know a couple of guys who own or work at a commercial property or they they're commercial investors and they tell someone else about it and it leads to business. It happens across all campaigns, every campaign in Republic over the time period that they spend with us. Wow. Awesome. I, I love that term, the, the shark tank effect. Um, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, it changes into the Republic the effect. Republic effect. And, and that's what I'm seeing. You know, it, it'll get to a point where Republic, I mean, you guys are now probably some one of the leading, you know, platforms for uh, equity crowdfunding, right? Uh, we are, yeah. So it will get to a point where people are going to, you know, oh, we were crowdfunded in Republic. And I think that's just going to be an extra marketing element uh, for all these brands. 
Yeah, I mean, we're seeing that this is actually helping us break some of these stereotypes down that we faced four years ago and still face some today. But, you yeah. know, something along the lines of 72 percent of the companies we've campaigned for or campaigned with have gone on to raise institutional funds post campaign. And a lot of the feedback I get is that those venture capitals, corporate funds, institutional or high net worth, like individual like investments, they love to hear what the crowd had to say about the product or service, what they had to say about the founders. It's just validation, but it's from not five or 10 people, but sometimes 500 or a thousand people. And they, they're, they're, they're like, wow, that's, you know, yeah, I made a yeah. hundred phone calls and never got that much information. So it's really good for the diligence and validation part of their, their pitch. This yes. is so awesome. So, wait, 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 sorry, before come you on, there, let me know, let me know. Okay. This, this <laughs> comes at the perfect moment. You know, to the earlier today we had a we were you read in my a, mind, bro, again. In, in a different interview. Okay. And that's good. So good. after the call, so right behind the cameras, they asked us about, you know, like, hey, we don't have a, a product yet and or a service and we want to, you know, start selling. How do we do it? How do you guys do it? And we our answer is talk to people. You need mm -hmm. to talk to people and let them, you know, tell you what they want, what problem they want solved, and you can build that product with them. So when you are talking about the community itself, you know, already giving you that feedback with your product, then I'm sure throughout the process, of course, these companies are, you know, building and and they're bettering their products and, and services, right? It is it, just an amazing like ecosystem of its own, where it's like the, the people that are believing in this company and they're investing is feeding them as, as well to become a better business. And this business is giving these people an awesome opportunity for them to... <laughs> if I move here, can I turn it on? Okay. <laughs> and this business is giving them an awesome opportunity for these people yeah. to, you know, invest and uh, hopefully in the future get a, a return on their investment. Yep. And I think one of the things we're seeing unfold today over and over again is along the lines of swarm theory. Are you guys familiar with that? Mm -mm. Uh, so, no, but we're open ears. Let's go. <laughs> I, a, uh, and I may have the wrong science name for this, but a group of bees is smarter than a single bee. Basically, they can go and group together, mm -hmm. deliver on the colony, get food for everyone kind of thing. So you're seeing that with the crowd mentality too, where a group of people end up making a smarter, wiser decision than an individual does. Um, so it's, 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 stuff like that is happening so much at, at Republican across the industry that it's really... Um, super, super, uh, I don't know, validating to me, you know, someone That's who's been so doing hard. this since the beginning, it's just looking like it's going to, it has become a thing in everyone's, you know, a tool in everyone's toolkit. That, that's wow. so, that's so interesting, and and I think you know this have coming uh, this has been coming up a lot in the conversations that we've been having on the show or even behind cameras with some of the people that we talk to on the content side of things, like the perspective of content, right? Like, so we see a lot of the the content that we reference is perfect because or or is at a very good level because they've been executing it for a long time. So the second we started to perceive our own content as a testing ground to test the message, to then attract those dream customers, to then, you know, either sell them into a service or a product, you know, the faster we started seeing this thing. So I want to relate it to what you guys do because, you know, see the company as, you know, hey, we put it out there, right? Who is a fan enough or like who believes in this idea, this product that they can join us and then that's a proof of concept that they need to take it to the next level? Right. I'm assuming I'm assuming before they get to that point, like what does the founder or a business owner need to hit to be able to work with you guys or start implementing this process? Yeah, so I mean we do have a diligence process. We do have um, you know investor you know, investors in our minds. So we want to bring them the most viable like opportunities that we can find. And one of the things that I've realized is that most investors are looking for a series of milestones achieved. There's no specific mix of those milestones achieved that will always mean this is going to be a great campaign. But it's you know it can be various things like they've already raised capital before. They've you know sold their first product. They have a, a, a team experience. The founder was actually experienced it with a similar company. Maybe they had an exit. Um, they have a cool partner, like a cool partnership. They have a meaningful partnership. Uh, you can go down the line. There's literally hundreds of different milestones that, you know, even thousands yeah. of different milestones that companies can achieve. And it's having some combination of those is what causes people to be attracted to it, to learn more about it. And a lot of that actually comes, and this is part of our, I'm not just, you know, I'm trying to play to your guys' show here, but 
a lot of it comes down to content why we're so focused on content we're always about making fresh content about the actual opportunity so people will have a chance to read more about it or learn more about it and if they're doing that it gets into the deal page and then if we've done our job and putting their best foot forward and that we're able to make you know visitors easily consume and digest that information they do those things i talked about invest become a client tell someone else about it uh, so having um, you know, bite-sized pieces or being able to deliver messages about who you are, what you're building, et cetera, in various ways. And a lot of times it's because people just don't read everything that comes across their desk. So you have to repeat yourself a bunch. Yep. It's really to inform them so they can come in and make that decision. And at that point that the, the actual crowd sophistication takes over and if they mm -hmm. see something they think will have a return on investment, they will invest. And that's when it becomes super special. Wow. wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting content up there as well. I mean, we, we, we really appreciate it because when it comes, you know, from from the mouth of a CEO, it's <laughs> it, it, it gives it so much, you know, relevance to the topic as well. And a little of the psyche, too, is just like the momentum game. You know, you throw out one, you get out another, you get some investors, you see some new clients, and then it keeps on kind of snowballing from there. If you can continue to you know, feed that beast, you're going to have a really successful run and probably all three of the main focuses that we have. Yeah, wow, that, 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 that's so interesting. Now, so here, here's the deal, right? Because when we first started in the direct response marketing world, right? We, wait, 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 sorry. You don't sorry. want me to go there yet? N not yet, I have one <laughs> question, which is kind of regarding, you know, community and, because yeah. this is how I, I see content, right? Like a few years mm. back, it was very centralized too, right? Like. The media, only a few had access to the message that you could put out there, right? And then with social media, now everybody has access to it. Again, uh, kind of like leveling the playing field for a lot of businesses and a lot of people. So it kind of like, I mean, the decentralized media, if you want to put it that way. So I'm seeing this same effect with you guys, right? And again, you guys, this you started, let's say, four years ago. So, I mean, compared to wall street that has you know many many years you guys are just starting up and i can't wait to see because i feel like you guys are, are going to be causing this decentralizing mm -hmm. effect in in finance so one of the i mean i feel very strongly about it. it's one of the coolest things that we've actually released in in, in a while and we've released a lot recently uh, mm -hmm. we're calling it social capital and, and what that is is uh users of ours are asked they're either prompted when they visit the site or sometimes we'll share it in newsletters to get these individuals signed up but they'll be asked if they want to uh, help their portfolio companies that would be you know anyone that they've invested in becomes a por portfolio company of theirs if they say yes they're asked to fill out a series of questions and forms basically helping you know identify who they are what their ex expertise is um, where they may have like you know a, a ability to give a lending hand yeah. And then on the other side, the founder of the company that ran the campaign receives a you know interactive um, or access to an interactive page where they can kind of look at it and say, okay, I had our you know average eighteen hundred investors, and two hundred of those individuals are marketing experts, three hundred of them are, are attorneys, and four hundred are business development. But fifty of those people came from Georgia, and seventy five of them have experience with you know consumer products so on and so forth so that they can have meaningful conversations yeah. with a large number of people who want to help them who want to help that company grow because they're aligned they want to actually make money on their on their investment and that company wants to have these people be the you know the the uh, the evangelists that they they were looking for in the first place so yeah. that will be i think a major um it's kind of a major turning point for us to be really i've already heard from founders who are, are you know onboarding or just being you know pitched the sale of a running a crowdfunding campaign say I, I do it just for that yeah yeah wow. just the value of that i mean the, the the data network. And yes the, the network Ooh. that you are creating there what you just explained honestly like a, for those that are just listening, I have a smile from one ear to the other one. Yeah, well, it doesn't fit in the new setup <laughs> to make it bigger. Because this is so important. And you're talking about those meaningful connections, right? And again, previous investing world, right? When you only pitch to the, a small group of people and they were investing, these people have very large networks as well, right? Very important networks. But now mm -hmm. you still have access to that and probably even bigger because all these people now that are coming and, and sharing the, this data with you, right? 
So, I mean, I, I have nothing else to There's say. A lot more value than like the twenty or fifty dollar investment people make. I mean, of course, you do have some people put a hundred bucks in that are worth several million dollars, but the founder would never know that. You also have people put in fifty bucks who are only worth fifty bucks. Yeah, but they have an amazing like social media following or network or business that actually has connections that they need. And now yeah. individuals are willing to share that, the network effect yeah. becomes substantially bigger than it ever was before. Yeah, that's true. The, the more and more you know, we put this show out there and we start connecting with people, you know, just like you. It's the same thing, right? Like right now, anything that they ask us, we're like, just go to Republic, right? Go, go there, go find out, you know, <laughs> go connect with Chuck. And 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 I think that's where we've seen the most value out of creating or producing a piece of content like this is the relationships that we're able to build not only with the guests, but with everybody listening, everybody connecting through that common thing. And you guys are taking it to a whole new level in a whole new industry. Like it's just, it, it, it's just amazing and gratifying to see that this is happening because as the world like moves forward, especially in other countries, right? Like, wow, like this will be so, this will mean so much to so many people if we are able to offer it to the millions and millions of people all around. And I hope that's a, that's the case. I know there might be some regulations here and there, you know, and, and it might take some time, but people listening to this or watching this, right, can then start moving the pieces to make this happen because it only elevates everybody. It elevates the community. Um, and it's so important that for us to, for this to be heard. Yeah, yeah. no, we're actively pursuing different international uh, partnerships and even joint or joint ventures are doing it on our own because we've had a lot of governments, countries knock on our door and say, we want your tech stack and your, you know, vision placed in our country. So that came from France. It came from India. It came from wow. uh, Australia. And then we yeah. have, you know, we actually have boots on the ground in Kuwait. That's our Middle East, North Africa. We have boots on the ground in Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, we have opportunities to do it in Mexico City. Mm. And right now, most countries can invest in the, in the deals that we bring to our platform. But I think it will create a different sense of networking community and results if we actually are in those locales and working with community directly. And we're all hearing the same thing that I heard four or five years ago in this industry, which was, you know, there needs to be more access to capital. There needs to be more, not in more access to investment opportunities. So it's, it's looking to be the same. If we can do... We recently had like a vertical approach where we acquired a, a video game investment platform. We acquired a, retail, a, a real estate investment platform. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't notice the uh, the Marvel stuff back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they have stuff around, yeah. <laughs> stay, stay tuned. Uh, there's some pretty well known video games coming up, and then yeah. so we added a, we're adding a Main Street vertical. We already had the the cryptocurrency vertical. I, I see that same type of vertical strategy approach playing out in international also whether it's through joint venture, through whatever, just regular partnerships. But uh, this Republic brand and the community and the sense of like support that we've built here would be replayed in those other locations too. Absolutely. Well, just the ramifications that that causes, right? Like with not only like the company that is being invested in, like they create opportunities for people to jump on and, and create an income out of it or like with the yeah. product and the services that they can offer. It's just uh, this massive yeah. hourglass effect that just happens yeah. all around the world. And it's so interesting to see. It's so amazing when, you know, we come together and, you know, the, what do you call it? The, sw the swarm theory right yeah, like the swarm theory. uh just including like these communities of people creating these amazing uh impact all around um, well, we wait till we start getting like money back in people's pockets so oh, we, we did focus yeah. most of our you know early days on equity deals and those take yeah. five seven ten years to play out a lot of them fail yeah so bring in video games it's all revenue share focus bring in real estate that's you know debt focus bring in viable investment opportunities that will get money back into people's pockets six months a year two years later and then it really becomes something special. And I think, you know, one of the things that we, we've we spent a lot of time on, it's been a pretty hellacious, like regulatory process and we're almost there. And we, we did a public raise on it a couple months ago as Republic Note. And that further democratizes investing. It, it further allows people who no, normally wouldn't be able to get access to most deals or even have the um, securities rights to invest in them. It actually gives them a chance to be part of these these investments that Republic has worked on. So I don't know if you guys know what Republic Note is, but we um, we, 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 we know because of Podmax, but I don't think people know about about that. Yeah, the Republic Note is we we took every deal that we work with at Republic, we get a cash commission and a securities commission. 
So they gave us a, a small investment in their company. And all those investments would, you know, they went into one bucket and we tokenized those that bucket mm -hmm. of securities. Um, and then what would happen when you tokenize it, it becomes a profit sharing, profit sharing token that we then were able to sell to the public, both accredited and non-accredited investors. Uh, that token represents every past, present, and then future deal that we worked on at Republic. Mm -hmm. If you're an owner of that token and one of those companies within it exits, we'll distribute the profits. Well, you know, if it's securities, we have to go through a liquidation process. But if it's cash, we'll do it on a pro rata basis back to all token holders. Wow. Um, you guys know the companies like SpaceX or um, Carta or Robinhood. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple others, Relativity Space and Equipment Shares. Those are big, big names. We've raised capital for them and we've, we've received security commissions from those companies. And when there are exits, assuming some of those exit, you as a note holder would actually get exposure to those exits. Um, so it's another great way for people to get in. And it's also a, very, a liquid way for people to get in. Yet we still have a ways to go with the regulatory process. We still have to actually you know, re publicly release the tokens. It would go to certain exchanges so that people could trade it. Yeah, but we've uh, been working on that for now for over two years, and um, you know we're getting there. It's close. That's so awesome! That's amazing. <laughs> Another opportunity. Right <laughs> it's just opportunities lying everywhere, Chuck. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what we're gonna do after this show. We're like, huh, man. I mean, we'll invest. We're just gonna go to <laughs> republic.co and we're gonna yeah, absolutely. Invest right Which there. I hope everybody listening or watching right now go and uh, check the site out. So. Here, here's another question, Chad. Like, do you, do you had, like, do you have everything in mind when you started this company? Like, how, how did that process go, right? Because we, we chat a lot about, you know, listening to your audience and start improving, and you know, listen to your things, and, 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 and I see this, like, in what you're talking. We're like, hey, we're releasing this and we're releasing that. Is this part of the plan from the very beginning, or the opportunity that have been coming along the way, and then you guys have been adapting to it? Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be lying this if I said it was mostly planned. I mean, a lot of it was. Uh, there's times of extreme focus on certain things, and then there's also mixed in with that a lot of what I would call like you know innovative risk take taking, where we're trying to quickly come up with something that we know might work, test it out. If it does work, great. We'll run with that. If it doesn't work, we put it to put it to sleep and we go on to the next thing. So if we get something that is perhaps standardized or settled. And we know it's part of our core and we need to continue, you know, building it. We will, but we, we also don't want to sit, you know, still. There's yeah. a, a lot of um, the mentality of our team and the desires on the team are to constantly come up with new things that could also add to the, you know, to the overall vision. And that's why we came up with things like Republic Note. Um, that's why we, you know, acquired companies like SheWorks, who had 20,000 female entrepreneurs and investors in their network. That's why we did the vertical play. Like we always knew. I guess vertical was one of the things that we knew like in the beginning that we want to do. Yeah. We needed to build traction, validation, and kind of, you know, make sure that it was a market fit before we started adding all these other verticals. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, when you mentioned about fake doco, right, which is the, the video game vertical, vertical, I was like, that is so smart. I mean, <laughs> you see the esport uh, world right now and it's growing like crazy right like how the value of that industry is massive and the fact that now i mean i'll say they have some of the biggest fans right and customers in that industry and the fact that now they get access yeah. to invest in games that they might enjoy later right is yeah. absolutely mind-blowing you invest and they get a share in the in the revenue with the you know with that developer so you know they're they're super aligned at that point because they want to not only like invest and have a return on it, but they're also like hoping or be, they're a buyer of the game. They're telling other people to buy the game. They know what they do. That'll eventually lead to more revenue, which will lead to more revenue share, which will get yeah. more money in their pocket. So Ooh, yeah, it, it's like those three things that you mentioned. I feel like in that vertical, it might be somewhat easier to maybe achieve. Yep. No, it is. And that's, that's why awesome. you have you know campaigns at Fig who had 27,000 investors in one 27,000 backers in one campaign. Wow. Yeah, um, that's incredible. And, and, I, I, and now that, you know, now that we're talking about like innovation and the, and, and more the company itself, right. I'm curious on the challenges you guys have to bring on 
businesses that want to be a part of Republic and bring on investors? Like, how, what are those challenges? How does that look like for you? Or what have you guys been implementing to bring these people in? It's been pounding like pounding the pavement on an, on an education, both for investors and companies. So mm -hmm. I was naive thinking four years ago, we could probably just pound the pavement for a couple of years and be good. <laughs> the reality is there's just too many millions of companies out there who still don't know about, and there's too many, there's probably even billions of investors who still don't know about this you know, opportunity or the ability that they have to get involved in private companies. Yeah. So we're constantly pounding the pavement with, you know, with education in mind, bringing people up that curve. And the more that we do it, and there's also pockets of resistance that are helpful to target. Law firms were one of the ones that were really difficult to pen penetrate four years ago. Now it's much better. Yeah. Uh, you still see things though, like, you know, the New York partner, you know, there's a large law firm, but the New York partners are cool with it and the California partners aren't cool with it. And then, you know, one of the California partners will sudden, suddenly become cool with it and the rest start to over like three or six months. <laughs> so we're slowly breaking, break, breaking up these, um, you know, stereotypes or people who just haven't come up the learning curve. And that's, that's really been, it's not a bad problem. It is a problem, but it is like, you know, it's, it's part of the, part of our life. It's just, yeah. You know, yeah. It's a long-term thing, you know, and I'm glad that you mentioned education because, and, and I'm going to use an example, of one of our clients, right? We work with this real estate company here and uh, they're local and they do turnkey rentals and they came to us and, and our partner and they were like, you know, Like we need help with, with, with our marketing. They were doing like just webinars and like targeted ads and whatnot. And we help them put this strategy, right? Where we literally build them a community and help them uh, create a podcast. And where the main topic, the main objective was educate people. And it has been absolutely yeah. amazing. Like they got back to us. We've been working I mean, with them for like six months and they're like, guys, like, let's just do this permanent <laughs> now because yeah. it has been amazing. The response from people, they now buy easier into the into the properties because they know what they're getting into. They're getting all this flow of information. Yeah. And not only they're buying once, now they want to buy twice and three yeah, houses. We, we, right? we, had a, we, we were on a call like just now and they're like, yeah, they're now buying bundles of houses. And we're like, what? <laughs> like people that have been like tuning into the show for the last six yeah. months, right? They're so educated and they, they consume all this information and it's so valuable. And then they're like, man, I have no doubt like this is gonna be amazing. So let me just invest, right? And, and, and I feel like that's what you guys are doing uh at a, also at a different level which I, i found wonderful because that's how we met you right through exactly. content and we're like <laughs> man like this is the thing and i it's gonna become a thing right not only for us for the company but for also for our team members like just provide them with these opportunities and like okay how can we how can we do this moving forward um which is amazing and you guys are tackling that and i think that's so necessary for everybody that has either a message or a product or something. It's like that process of education, your community, right? And then those guys that really sync with your with your message, they're going to come with you like to the end of days. Yeah, I'm just going to throw this out there. In the future, Chuck, we might have plans <laughs> of, you know, cut doing something, you know, in the in the tech industry might, might be going to you. Be like, hey, Chuck, <laughs> you know, we got this. Uh, can we we want to be part of Republic. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Yeah, so you wanted to ask him before I before I interrupted you about the direct response marketing yes. world. You were going to say something. All right. Now's the right time. Let's All go. Right, let's do it. All right, I hope you're ready for this question. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we, we we went to college. You know, business school. Uh, it was all good. The only purpose on it, like to be completely honest, that I went to college was to stay here in the states. Nothing more. I was like, I don't see value in this thing unless staying as a student in here and then I'll figure something out. So through business, though, they teach us, you know, the J curve, right? Like how people in the business side, they come in and, you know, you you raise this money and then you work and then you exit. Right. That's a that's a simplification of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, very, very, simple, very, very simple. simple. Right. So then we get exposed as we started to build our business and the marketing agency and so on to direct marketing response and they direct response direct marketing. response marketing yeah wow okay <laughs> where's my english today okay so and then their position is against the j curve right Espe especially like people have been, been working with because they use the direct response marketing to kind of fund the business and then grow it that way through different strategies when we found out about you you know we went through all this uh crazy stuff and it's not It's not millions of dollars, but we build a business and we have a team and it's super awesome. But it, it took us a second. And it was a point in time where I would have loved 
to have an opportunity like the one you're presenting to people. And I'm sure like there's a lot of people that do that. So what is your take on Canada? That What are some advantages on u- utilizing a system if you have like a, a company in place instead of like depending on solely on these sales? Like, is it okay to go ask for this help from investors and, you know, go out and... and yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, <laughs> I think as a, a you know a, a business owner, as an entrepreneur, or whatever you want to call yourself, you you have you can't leave any stone unturned, and you have to you know mm-hmm. use every resource if that if that's at your fingertips. Um, and a lot of people take a bit of a backseat approach. They think you know they read something in the paper, you know, a, a news rag or on online about this company was able to do X Y Z, and meanwhile the the reporter didn't you know do it justice by talking about the. Mm-hmm time it took or the effort it took the brain damage it took the tears that were like lost from it and they get off track and they, they think it's going to be an easy road it's never going to be an easy road and you got to like like i said turn over every turn turn every stone try you know everything that you can because if you are you know going to be successful and you really want to be successful with what your plan is you got to do it and it's not going to do it otherwise yeah well, uh, and it's well, having things like crowdfunding at your, t- at, your, at your tips but we're not the only thing i like i a lot of times the mentality, I don't want this to happen within, you know, investment crowdfunding. The mentality was VC or bust. And now it's becoming, okay, VC, and I can also do, crowd, you know, investment crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be, you've got to use everything. Use, use investment crowdfunding, use VC, use angels, use accelerator programs, use whatever you can find. Go back to like your, your school community. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can kind of prime the pump or, t- you know, compliantly test the waters to figure out what the, what the viability of the, of the crowd or what they think about your viability. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah. I, Chuck, there, there's something I, I really love about your answer. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to relate this to a book that I'm reading right now. It's called The Psychology of Money. I think it just got released not too long ago. And the guys, the first chapter of the book is like, <laughs> what you know about money is 0.00001%. <laughs> And you think it's like 80% of everything about money, right? So that got me thinking, say, like, well, that's that's amazing, right? Because a lot of people go their entire life thinking they know about 80% about money, right? And they have these false beliefs, for example, right, in the direct response marketing world um, about, you know, J-Curve investing, <laughs> private equity. And, I, and I'm like, wow, like that, that comment just opened my mind because it, it goes back to education. A lot of people are just not educated enough and they don't know about, you know, the positive side of reaching out. And like you're saying, taking advantage of your resources and the resources that are out there. And don't be afraid to like, you know, take the, like I mentioned earlier, climbing to the mountaintops and screaming. It's not much different than like going into a park with a robe on and exposing yourself to a bunch of ran- like random people who don't know. You don't do that. It's probably, you know, it is illegal, but you, you can't be, um, it's a no shame game. Yeah. And you have to recognize that right away. And you can have no shame and still be professional and still be courteous to people. So also keep that in mind. But you want to get out there and expose yourself. That's ultimately, I don't care if you're doing B2C, B2B, if you're, you know, the craziest, weirdest technology that no one in the world would ever use except for five people. But you want to have a brand name. You want to have an optics and image out there. So don't be afraid to do it. Absolutely, I, I, I love, love, I, I love the no shame game. No shame game yeah. so, I don't know if you realize, Chuck, in the intro, we said hashtag table face, and that is exactly what it is. You know, like having no shame, going for what you want, asking, like you said, in a polite way, right, in a respectful way. But I feel like there's so many people that are just afraid of doing that, of like putting themselves out there and taking advantage of opportunities. There is. We get plenty of people who come up through the, the pipeline who are looking great. You think it's going to be an excellent campaign and they get to the moment of truth and they get cold feet. Um, mm. Can't be like that because I think this is a really good, like, it's a good way to kind of filter out who's going to be and who's not going to be successful wow. with their company yeah. just, it's through investment crowdfunding. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. And, I, and I'm sure you guys would like to help, you know, many, many more. But at the same time, if that person doesn't help themselves, like I remember yeah. uh, about, you know, a year, almost a year now, I, I, I quit my full time job to to do this business. Right. And, uh, you know, later, a few months after we learned that we literally had no business, it was like freelancing yeah. kind of deal. Right. But, you know, I really believed that that what we were doing is creating is creating an amazing thing for our clients for us the personal development right and what i did was i went out 
and I and I found like literally I lent, I asked for money for like ten different banks, and I, I got like forty grand. Right. And I'm like, this is what exactly like with also by credit, because we also have different names. Fonzie has also <laughs> like bad credit. So it like it, it trickled into me. So we didn't we found out that, that out. Yeah, crazy story. Bad, anyway. bad decisions, guys. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. That's in the past. But anyway, so I was able to find these forty thousand dollars to then okay, you know, that's gonna be my my money, my safety money for the next eight months as we like devote to Beast Bros, to continents profit, to what we do now. And and I think like inside of me. People are like, man, you're crazy, right? When I told my wife a few months after, she had no idea I was doing this, by the way, right? She was like, well, man, you, like everybody's like, you are insane. But I think like deep down, we always knew that this was the thing that we wanted to do. And like somehow we were going to figure it out. So I want to encourage everybody, like you don't have to go, you know, you, you don't have to go as crazy as me, but explore the possibilities. And maybe personal loans is not the best option. Now I know, <laughs> but it was the option that was there for me because I wasn't educated. So guys, go tune in into, into these shows, tune in into the, the people that you follow, tune in, learn from them because keep an open mind. I mean, look at us. You, we, we don't do tech. We met you at this event that was all about tech. <laughs> and now we're fascinated by the world that, that you're in and you're helping so many people. So I, I encourage everybody to do that. And, you know, thank God I touch wood that uh, our $40,000 craziness, you know, rampage worked yeah. out <laughs> because, yeah. they, you know, they we invested in a coach and things worked out. We're, you know, we're, we've been yeah. doing really it, good. So. It, it's funny. This morning I wrote <laughs> in, in a little piece of paper, I wrote, there's no opportunity without risk. Right. And it this, I think this is, a, you know, a, a, a great thing to Put it at the end of the episode because a lot of people were just so oh, afraid of taking risks sometimes and we prefer to stay, stay in our comfort zone. So we do encourage everybody that is yeah. listening or watching to, you know. Yeah, thank you, thank you Trish. Yeah, she's putting here. Sometimes it's not about lacking the resources. It's about being resourceful, right? It boils down from the mindset. That's awesome. That's right. it's, 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 called, it's called taking the leap of faith. Yes. Mm, yes. yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. So Chuck. I think we are getting towards the end here and it has been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. But, you know, we have a few a few questions before we we're done. Number one is what action point can you give to someone that is listening right now to take one step forward and let's call it a step forward in their financial world? Uh, so I'm going to assume as someone who's really never dabbled in private investments, I would say visit a site like Republic, a WeFunder, a Seed Invest, a Start Engine, et cetera, kind of peruse around, find something that you're familiar with. And then if you do make an investment, invest something that you can afford, afford to lose. Um, you do also want to do it multiple times. You don't have to do it in the same day. It can be over the same quarter or year, but you want to eventually have not just two or three, but something like 10, 12, 15. So keep that in mind when you um, decide how much you're going to budget to this. Yeah, And then yeah. feel it out. Like you'll get some more it's probably also good to do it in different platforms because you'll it'll be different types of deals it'll be different types of communication it'll be different you know different experiences that you have and then you find something that you're comfortable with and appreciate and then you can really you know get into be, you know building a, like a true portfolio of private investments that's awesome I, I love the investing something that you can afford to lose mm -hmm. um I think that that's a good way to put it because a lot of people are afraid of putting they they I feel like a lot of people see it as I'm putting all my, my livelihood <laughs> yeah. in here, right? And then they lose yeah. it. Like, oh, it's all gone. Life's <laughs> over. Um, so thank you for that. And then the last question, we usually ask people, where would you be if you didn't publish, right? So I want to tackle this in a different way. And I want to ask you, Chuck, where would you be with Republic if you guys didn't educate people? No, we would have failed. <laughs> we would have failed. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy. I would not be on the show right now. Yeah, you, you you will be maybe <laughs> producing another international, An international TV show. TV yeah. show. <laughs> it, the TV show wouldn't exist either, man. That would be gone. Also, that's part of Republic. So yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, part we'll, of our innovation. We had to talk up more about that maybe on the next episode. Who knows? <laughs> part two in the next conversation because I got so many questions. <laughs> awesome, Chuck. Where where can people find you? Where can people find Republic? How can they connect? How can they go? Uh, Republic.co. Um, I'm Chuck at Republic.co. You probably guessed that anyway. So I'll say what it is. Um, I respond to most emails. There's some that if you're at, you know, if you're going to try to sell something to me, I've never met you. I'm probably not going to reply. 
So. Yeah, come on, guys, build relationships. We've been talking about this all episode. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Okay, Republic.co. We're going to leave all the links right in the description. All you got to do is like scroll down and it's going to be there, guys. I literally encourage you guys to go do that. This, the second we saw Chalk uh, speak at the Podmax event, we probably spent like a whole hour going through the site. And right now, the yes. gaming side is in the site. I think it's already integrated. You guys are good to go. They just moved to new offices, so we can't wait. That's why yes. you see like all the boxes in the background <laughs> and we're helping and kind of like keep the light on. Yeah. <laughs> Before we go, actually, Chuck, you know, I actually asked this question uh, behind cameras, um, but I think a lot of people could benefit from this one today. So what is one book, right, that either changed your life or led you into this financial path that you could recommend? Uh, it was probably from good to great. And that was. Yes. 15, 20 years ago. From good to great. All yeah. right. Well, if you made that impact, it must be it's, it must be good. It's being recommended many, many times. So thank you, Chuck. Appreciate it. Adding it to Fancy Book, Book Club. Oh, yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure. I need to start that show, Fancy's Book Club. Yes. <laughs> Bye, Chuck. Don't leave yet. You need to experience the Hispanic goodbye. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Content is Profit podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at Beast Bros. Co. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you did, it was mind blowing. Don't forget to share it and, and leave a five-star review. Thank you. Thank you, guys.